Good morning, Warriors on a Mission. Good morning, good morning. I don't know about y'all, but it's an awesome day for me already. Uh, I got up and got a chance to just talk to God, and God actually gave me some things that I needed for myself that I've been questioning for years, and God is just good. You know, I don't know um, if you get a chance to really spend a lot of time with God, uh, but I tell you, if you don't, if you haven't gotten to the point where you put God on your schedule, uh, you're really missing out. And I say that because uh, there are times, God bless you, Anna Austin, uh, there are times that I find myself uh, getting cluttered um, by the cares of the world. And what I find out when I'm that way, uh, that my frustration level tends to climb. Uh, and, and then, you know what, if you were able to catch what I said, when my schedule gets cluttered, that means that I'm not spending enough time with God. And when I start to spend time with God, he begins to orchestrate my day. Uh, he begins to show me a priority scale that he's ordained versus the priority scale that I ordained. And I thank God because he takes that kind of time with me because a lot of the things that we are running after, they really don't have a prosperous end. There are things to tie our time up. And I have to laugh because one of the things God did take me off this weekend was TikTok. And I laugh because when you look at the time, what the name says, TikTok, 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 TikTok. Yeah, exactly. And so one of those things that, you know, we feel like um, we're chasing after that we're thinking that's entertainment or whatever the thing is, it is actually just burning time. <laughs> it doesn't have a prosperous end. You might get a little few things out of it <clears throat> that you think really further along, make you further along. But it really, God could give you that without you spending hours or spending days or spending time doing it your way. And so I thank God this morning, as I was saying, that God actually put me on something that, you know, that I had been asking God for to give me clarity for some years. God began to show me in his word and I got a chance to really just dig in. And so that's how God does, because whatever your care is, he has a promise. They cast all your cares upon me for he cares for you. If we are casting on him, he will give us the answer that we need in due time. I don't care how big the issue is. I don't care what the situation is. If you know it's something that you need help with, God will lead us. And so I thank God that on this morning, he also gave me food, personal food, but he gave us food for the masses. And I thank God for this because as God began to give me this, I was literally like, God, I don't see it. Uh, what do you have? And God is leading me straight. He's first thing he, as I began to pray this morning, he gave me Jacob. And I'm like, okay. And so I got started. God was giving me stuff for, like I said, personally. And then he gave me back to this and I'm starting to study. And I'm like, God, what is it? I'm not seeing it. And and God just said, study harder, read it slow, read it, look at it, look at it, read it, look at it. And I'm looking at the blessing. And this is where we're at. Genesis, the 27th chapter, looking at verses 27 through 29. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, God, what is it? I don't see it. I'm like, am I missing it? God said, no, that's it. This is what I have for you this morning. And for you all that know the blessing that behind this, it says the blessing, right? But when you look at it, this is the blessing that Isaac spoke on his son, Jacob. And I'm looking at this thing and I said, God, this is all flesh. God said, no, read it closer. And I'm like, God, I don't see it. I'm missing it. God said, read it closer. And so today we're going to be looking at this particular blessing. And it's so awesome that it should speak to you that God has really given us something that to show us where we are. I know this was a blessing that was spoken from father to son. And for you all that know the story, there's some trickery behind it. Uh, and bef but we're not going to go into that before we go into prayer. So I guess let's go into prayer first. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your word on this morning. I thank you, God, for those that you've already ordained to see warriors on a mission. The blessing, God, speak your word out in clarity. 
Let it touch our spirit, Father. Help us to yield to ourselves, to our flesh, and allow your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us. God, you are awesome in everything that you do. I thank God for your patience. I thank God for your grace and your mercy that you share on your children. Lord, help us to just be vulnerable to you. Let pride get out of the equation when we're dealing with you. Matter of fact, let pride get out of the equation when we're dealing with anyone. Let you have the glory out of our life, God. Lord, teach us. Help us to build. Help us to continue to grow to you. Help us to continue to persist in getting closer to you. Help us to, Father, give us a first zeal to come to you, to seek your face. And Lord, I thank you. And so right now, I speak to every stronghold, every, every demonic spirit, every de demonic thought, every attack of the enemy. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now. I bind every attack, every stronghold, every distraction. I bind it right now. And I cast it back to the pits of hell. And I loose your holy focus, your spirit in our lives, God, so that we are able to see you and focus on you and you only. Let you be the forefront of everything that we do, God. Let we see you. Let us hear you. Let your voice be the dominant voice that we hear and that we follow. God, we thank you. We erase every time we have missed the mark and have asked for forgiveness. We erase it right now from our memory. It is no longer valid. You have forgiven us, so we forgive ourselves. And let us stay focused, not distracted on you and your work and your purpose in our life. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Now, y'all get ready. This is what God had gave me this morning. And I'm telling you, God has literally given every one of his children a blessing. Not just a blessing that, you know, we often count as blessings. But God has showed us, God has created every one of us with a purpose. And oftentimes God has revealed the purpose that he's created us for to us, just like he did to Isaac, just like he did to Jacob. Today we're covering Jacob. God has given us the blessing and showed us on many occasions what it is he's created us for. And so we're going to look at this thing that this blessing that Isaac spoke on Jacob. Now, when you follow this thing, it's going to bless you. It's going to bless you because there's something that you're going to be able to identify with concerning you. And then God is going to begin to reveal some things why he led this to this particular passage this morning. Let's go come to come with me to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Starting at verse 27, if it's uh, 27 through 29 is what we're looking at. The actual blessing spoken. And here it goes. Verse 27, it says, And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him and said, Here we go. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Good morning, fam. Listen to this. I know this is something, and let's give you the background of this. Now, we know the tricky for those of us that remember the story or that's studying it and understood or maybe have just read over it. This was a blessing that Isaac spoke on his son, Jacob. Now, the trickery was Isaac was on the assumption he was assuming that he was speaking to Esau, which was originally his oldest son. That's his oldest son. So he was Isaac, which had gone completely blind at this time was blessing, in his mind, he was blessing the oldest son, Esau. Well, what happened was, Rebecca heard it, and she called for Jacob to come in, 
and told him to go kill uh, one of the, you know, the animals outside and put that because Esau, Esau was hairy. And so he told, she told Esau, um, Jacob to go kill one of the animals outside, take that, take the hair, put it on your hands and wrist and your neck so that when the blind Isaac, the father, began to bless Jacob because the trickery was she wanted Jacob to get the blessing of Esau. And so she told him to put this stuff over him. And so she, Jacob would, uh, so that Jacob would smell like Esau because Esau was a hunter. And so the father had told Esau, go on out there and, and get the game and fix me a soup, a, a, a soup so that you can come back and feed me so I can bless you. Rebecca heard it, which is mom. She heard it. And so she told Jacob, which was her favorite, come in here so you can get the blessing. Go out there and kill the animal. Come back in so you smell like the outside. I'll fix the stew like your father likes it. Check this out. And like I said, God works. And people, you've always heard, God works in mysterious ways. You've heard that. Uh, but check this out. Rebecca, mom, mom now, mom is going to fix the stew or super. How do you want to call this thing? So that. She knows that she's the cook of the home. She knows what her husband likes. Now, check this out. Isaac told the oldest son to go get this uh, the game and fix the stew. So now you're already looking at the trickery uh, that not only is Jacob participating in, but mom is participating in it because she's like, okay, I know what my husband likes. I'm going to fix it exactly right. Okay, and all this is buying time. So now you got two working against one. Esau don't even have a clue about the, the, what's going on. Okay, so now what ends up happening for the storyline, what, what actually happened in the word of God and what actually happened in history, what happened is Jacob did all of these things. He put the, the fur on him and he smelled like the game and he came in with the stew his mom made. And, and so he, I, Isaac, even being blind, he says... Are you sure it's Esau? Because you sound like Jacob. Come closer. And he feels Jacob. And he says, well, you feel like Esau. But you have the voice of Jacob. Remember, I told you he's blind. So he begins to bless Jacob. Now, check this. When you see this, remember, Isaac thinks that he's speaking to Esau. Esau loves to hunt. So now listen to this blessing. It says, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which was a blessed thing because a hunter loves to hunt. He's outside hunting. And for you know most of the men at that time frame, that's what they did. They were outside guys. They That's what they did. So it's like he's saying, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field. Now, when you think about the field, this is what really blessed me. When I thought about Psalms 23, when I thought about the 23rd Psalm, and he said, you know, make your uh, your green pastures, show you lay down in green pastures. Uh, so um, uh, I thought about the green pastures in the field. And, I, and he says, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. So he's telling Jacob, thinking that he's talking to Esau, that you smell like a blessed field. 28, therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven. He's telling, in his mind, he's telling Esau that may God supply what you love to do. He says, therefore may God give you the dew of heaven to provide for your field. May God water your field. May God water what I have, what you love to do. You are a hunter. God made you. He think he's talking to Esau, but he's actually talking to Jacob. He's telling Esau. He think he's telling Esau, may God water what you love to do. May God let it prosper in your life. Amen. Come with me to 29, uh, 20, verse 28. He says, so I'm back over to verse 28. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, the best the best blessings. Now he's he's saying, may God bless you with the things of heaven to, to provide for what you like to do. Of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. So he's now, he think he's talking to Esau. He's saying, may God bless you 
what what the uh, provision that comes from heaven to bless what you like to do and let it provide greatness. Let it provide the fatness of the earth. It says, and, and plenty of grain and wine. So now let you be able to enjoy what you like to do. Let it bless you with abundance and let you even have the best to, to provide, uh, to, to even go along with that. Because the, the, it says, and plenty of grain and wine to do what you like to do. So now think this out. Now I want you to take this blessing literally. E, uh, Isaac is thinking he's blessing Esau. And he's telling him that everything you're going and you're coming, I want it to be blessed. Verse 29. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be masters over your brother and let your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Let people serve you. So now, what Isaac is speaking over Jacob, which you think he's talking to his oldest son, Esau, he's telling them, not only will I want God to bless you with what you like, but I want you to have all the service that you need to assist you with what God has blessed you to love and enjoy. And not only that, I want your brothers to bow down to you. I want your brothers to look up to you. Now, even though this is done with trickery, God makes no mistake. This is what I'm getting at. God makes no mistake. That even though he says all things work for the good of those who love the Lord, all things, even when it's done wrong, all things, even when you think you missed the mark, all things, even when people stand in your way, all things, man, when God blessed me to really help me to understand that, that every decision that I made, God knows how to turn it around for my good. Even when I bond and it blew up in my face, God knows how to turn that situation around for my good. So now in this situation where I'm not advocating doing anything against the will of God, but even though you got two liars, mom and son, you follow this thing. Isaac blessed them not knowing. He think he's blessing Esau. Now let's go through the story. Now, just for the rest of this, when Jacob received the blessing, he walks out the room. Shortly after that, Esau comes in and he finds out this is when Isaac finds out that he has blessed the wrong son, but he can't go back on it because the blessing has been already spoken. Amen. Our word is our bond. We got to go back to that. That's why it's so important for us as children of God to govern our tongue. We must. Old school saying, if you ain't got anything good to say, don't say anything at all. So we have to go back to understanding there's power in the tongue. Isaac knew this. Guess what? Jacob knew this. Guess what? Rebecca knew this. And guess what? Esau knew this. So Esau, when he came in and Isaac found out he had made a, a mistake and he had blessed the wrong son, he said, I can't go back on it. So now Esau was mad as fire at his brother. And he really don't say that he was mad at his mother at the time because he probably didn't even know his mama had anything to do with it. But guess what? Check this out. This is what God was giving me. And I'm like, when I kept saying, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. What is it that you're saying? Even though this thing was done wrong, once, this is what God was showing me. Once Jacob, because Jacob left immediately. Mom, when, when mom heard that Esau was mad and said, hey, you know what? Daddy is getting close to his latter days. When daddy dies, I'm taking Jacob out. When mom hears about it, she says, Jacob, you got to go. And she sent Jacob on his merry way. Well, Isaac had already spoke the blessing over Jacob. It wasn't until, this is what blessed my life. It wasn't until Jacob actually became obedient to the word of God and got out of his way, his own way, that he finally started receiving the blessing that his father had spoken over him. Now, guess what? Going back to the original thing that we started saying, 
how God is giving us purpose. Every child of God has a purpose. Matter of fact, God created all of us with a purpose. But once you be, get saved and you become one with God by accepting the Holy Spirit, then God oftentimes will start revealing to you your purpose. If you ask him, sometimes he'll just start showing stuff and you don't even really understand what he's showing you. But if you ask him, he'll start connecting the dots. But it's not until we become submissive to the word of God. It's not until that we get out of our own way. It's not until we begin our journey on pleasing God and doing our best to walk in the things of God, in the mind of God, the thoughts of God, which, which means we have to renew our mind. It's not until we begin to start our journey and press toward the mark of the higher calling. What is the higher calling? To walk like Christ, to walk like our big brother Jesus. Amen? To walk in the things of God, to renew our mind and let our minds be on our mind be on Christ Jesus. To, to follow the perfect example of Jesus Christ. To for God I live, for God I die. To where it's not long, no longer my agenda. But it's what God you have ordained for me to do. That's when God actually unlocks the purposes. That's when we're able to now begin to move in our purpose. Because God can only elevate us according to our submissive will. What, I'm, what am I saying? God began to reveal this to me a couple years ago. About myself. It's not until I get to a certain level. In him. It's not until I get to the point where I let Tyrese get out of the way. Tyrese got to die. And I begin to let God move in my life. It's God, as I've said before, God gave me this. We think that we're waiting on God, but in all actuality, God is waiting on us. God is waiting for us to hit all the check marks. That he's designed for this season of our life so that he can take us to the next. So now we're saying by God, I'm, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that. But you still got me right here. Because there's something that God has revealed to us that he's not pleased with and we're refusing to let it go. Ouch. Yeah. Even me. There are things in my life that should have been laid down before. But here I am still holding on. Oh, he's telling on himself. I sure am. Because the fact of the matter is still some of us are dealing with issues that we say I'm not we're not even willing to even agree that we are in our own way. But God does this lovingly. He does this lovingly because he consistently lets us know this needs to die. See, what we're holding on to, and we think we're getting a little bit of gratification out of it, it doesn't even compare to what God is trying to take us. And when we get in line with God, and we allow God to be the forefront, and we say, God, even though I love this thing, and I want it, and I'll give it to you, I'll, I'll extend it out. But it's my, it's, y'all remember old school Charlie Brown and Linus and how he loved his blanket? It's my Linus blanket. I got to hold on to it. I don't feel right unless I got it. And God's saying, here, take it. Let me, let me, let me, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Because I got it greater for you. But we're still holding on. Understand that we are holding ourselves back. When God began to once again show me that the blessing that the Father, huh, y'all catch it? The Father spoke over his son was conditioned upon me. And we say, oh, wait a minute. God has unconditional love. He does have unconditional love. But he can't take you where you need to go if you're still dragging old stuff. Can't put new wine into old wineskins. If we're still refusing to let some things go, yes, we're still child of God. Yes, we're still going to go before God and and we should hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on in. Yes. But the 
purpose that God has ordained us to have and that he showed us we can't walk in it unless we move at his pace. Uh, this, uh, 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 is this sinking in? And oftentimes, and I'm talking about me now, even though the word of God is coming out of my mouth, as you see it, it's the Holy Spirit speaking. And God is talking to me, just like he's talking to you. And I have to receive what I'm hearing. Amen? God knows what's hindering us. Even when we don't want to Face it, God knows what's hindering us. God has showed us what's hindering us. We must be about our Father's business. And even against our own flesh, let it go. We can't get there holding on to what God has told us to let go. Can we just meditate on that for a moment? We can't get where God wants us to go, holding on to what God has told us to let go. What an awesome father. Children of God, and I'm talking to me. Everything that we need, God has supplied it. Everything. But we have to be willing to move according to his voice. According to what he's telling us to, to do, we have to be willing to do. Mm. He doesn't make any mistakes. It's not until you pass the 12th grade that you finally get your diploma. The thing you've been working on since kindergarten, preschool. You have to pass the criteria of the 12th grade to get your degree. What does that mean? There are checks and balances God has told us that we must do in order to graduate to the next level of life. So I'm saying to us, be willing to move even against every fleshly desire. Every fleshly craving, man, be willing to let God lead us out of our filth, out of our season of old, the old season that doesn't profit us anymore. Most, most cases, it never profited in the first place, but we kept it as a Linus blanket. We kept it as, if I let go of this, this is my comfort. This is my comfort zone. God, I know you're telling me to let it go, but what am I do then? We let it go. The vacancy can now be filled with the thing God wants you to have for this next season. <laughs> God, I thank you. Now I pray that you will give us the holy determination, the zeal to follow what you are telling us to do. Not looking back like God told Lot's wife. Why did God make that, make sure that we understood that story? Why was that put into the Holy Scripture? Why was that put into the Word of God? Because God has called us to go forward. Go forward. Whatever was left behind was left for a reason. Mm. Go forward. I can't bring you forward if you continue to look back. So he told Lot's wife, and he told all of them, don't look back. Escape Sodom and Gomorrah and don't look back. But y'all know the story. In the process of Lot and his family escaping, Lot's wife turned and looked back. Why? 
because she really thought that she was leaving something valuable. And when she turned and looked back, that's where she turned into a pillar of salt. She never moved another step. She became part of the destruction because she looked back. I don't know about y'all, but I need to meditate on this even longer after we say amen. Because the truth of the matter is, some of the things we've been holding, we've held for years. And we move away and we come back to it. And we move away and we come back to it. We move away and we come back to it. But the truth of the matter is, God has given us all we need to walk completely away from it. He gave us freedom of choice, though. If we desire to turn and look back, he gave us that ability. Even when he say, even when we say, God, don't let me look back, he gave us freedom of choice. He gave us freedom of choice. I used to ask God, and y'all heard me say this before, God, I, make me a robot for you. If God made me a robot that takes away from the significance of being able to choose heaven or hell, that's the issue. Will I choose to spend life eternity with God? By my actions on earth, or will I choose to spend eternity in hell by my actions on earth? So for God to make me a robot to where I just automatically serve him, that defeats the purpose of giving us a free mind. And so today, as we go into a close, whatever that thing is, God has already given us all we need, the strength, the ability to go forward. We have to have a determined mind. That will walk it out. Walk it out pleasing him. Don't look back. Mm. Y'all I'm hearing for myself. What's coming out of here. I'm hearing it. And it's not just for you, it's for me. Don't look back. Freedom of choice. Don't look back. Freedom of choice. Don't look back. God, I thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word on this eve, this morning, this afternoon. God, give us what, give us the, the determination. Matter of fact, no. I can't even ask that. Help us to walk in the determination. You've given us everything we knew, every tool. So help us to walk in the determination. To renew our mind so that our mind will be like yours. So that my mind, our minds will be on Christ Jesus. Our mind will stay on you. Not looking back, but going forward. And now, we speak it out of our mouth that we shall move forward in the things of God, never looking back. We shall move into the next season that God has ordained for us, never looking back. We shall fulfill the purpose that God has ordained for us, never looking back. And God, we thank you. That from this moment forward, that we shall move forward in you, never looking back. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We got things to do. But God, God has made this thing easy for us, y'all. Fact of the matter is, it takes action to look back. We're made. To look forward. It takes more action to look back than it does to look forward, don't it? Let's continue to pursue and press toward the mark of the higher calling. God's there. He's right here walking with us. He's omnipresent. Everywhere at the same time. 
close your eyes and see Jesus and see him saying, come with me. See our father saying, come with me. Come on. And every time you get tempted, close your eyes and see the father standing there and saying, come with me. Come with me. Thy good and faithful servant, come with me. I love y'all. Guys, we I'll be with you all on Tuesday. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue in this journey with God to fulfill the purpose that he has given us to give him glory in every area of our life. He's given us the tools. He showed us how to use them. So let's keep going. Amen. Love y'all. Have an awesome day. Keep God first and let's continue to press toward the mark of the higher calling. I love y'all. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.